If the kitchen's where you'd rather have your friends and family gather, you should hit the like and subscribe down below. And if filling plates and platters while maintaining flavor matters, then there's a stellar cook that you should know. It's Rain, the planet with a palate. They'll keep you fed and coming back for more. So come on, take up space. Rain will make a tasty plate. And tell the Diet Karens where to go. It's the Planet with a Palette Cooking Show! All clean. Howdy y'all and welcome to a new episode of Planet with a Palette. I'm so excited because today we are doing something that we've been talking about doing for a while. And I'm sorry that I've missed a couple of updates, but... I've had a lot going on in life lately, so let me fill y'all in. <laughs> in just the last uh, less than three months, I have gotten married. I'm in the middle of planning a honeymoon. I have been getting kids out of school for the summer. I have been working like full time. So I have been very, very busy, but I have been thinking about all the yummy, delicious foods I want to make with y'all and I'm so excited to be back. So <laughs> tonight, without further ado, we are gonna make a family favorite, uh, you know, American classic meatloaf, simple, delicious. And I'm going to make, so in my earlier episode, my premiere episode actually of Planet with a Palette, I made um, fried chicken, it was so yummy. So if you wanna check out my mashed potatoes episode, it's on that very first episode, fried chicken and mashed potatoes. But what I'm gonna be making today is a potato salad. And what I love about this potato salad is that it can be served warm or cold. It's so delicious. It kind of, if you serve it warm, it still kind of gives that mashed potato vibe. And if you serve it cold, then it's much more like a potato salad, but it's somewhere in between because it's got chunks, it's whipped. I just kinda, mm, it's the perfect, perfect treat and I can't wait to share it with y'all. So what you're going to want to start with is about five, mm, depends on how many people you're feeding, five to 10 potatoes, depends on how big the potatoes are. But we're going to kind of fill it out. Um, and the good thing about this potato salad is if you get to the end and you feel like it's too thick and not creamy enough, you can always just add a little milk or a little stock, vegetable stock or chicken stock would be fine and just thin it out a bit. So first we're gonna get our potatoes, which have been rinsed and set aside here for us. I need to use up these potatoes before they go bad, so I'm gonna be making a big batch of potatoes tonight. So in my last episode when I did my, um, my potatoes, my mashed potatoes, I completely skinned them. We're not gonna do that this time. You can use an Idaho potato or a yellow potato. Those are both work great for this dish. A Yukon Gold, delicious in this dish. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna skin about half of the skin off. And we know all those good potato skins are gonna go directly into my compost. So these are gonna go in the compost bowl. We are just gonna skin about half the skin off. We wanna make sure that the remaining skin looks good. No cuts, bruises, whatever. Okay. The idea is just that when we chunk these up, we want there to be less than the full amount of skin. Because if we have too much skin, it'll be too thick, too chunky, not what we're looking for. But I do like some of the skin in this. Also, as with most vegetables, like, our carrots and stuff, you notice I tend to leave the skins on. That's where a lot of your nutrients are. So you get a lot of nutrient. And I happen to love the earthy flavor and the texture that it lends specifically to this dish. Next, you're gonna to wanna to slice these up, throw them in your pot, and we're gonna boil them just like we were gonna make mashed potatoes or anything else. We're just gonna boil them simple this time. No stock, just water. 
with some kosher salt to our water. This is a big boy potato. We love a thick boy. Or a thick girl, or a thick them. We just love the thickies around here. Gosh, one of my favorite things from the last episode was how Ivy's mom was like, ooh, these artichokes belong in this kitchen. These are planted with a palette artichokes because they're enormous. These are the biggest artichokes I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, hey, thick artichokes. We love it. We love to see it. Representation, baby. Ugh. Okay. We're gonna throw in just a little bit, as I mentioned before, to boil. We're gonna put in some kosher salt. Yeah. Let's get this pot on to boil and we'll start with our meatloaf. Woo! All right, y'all, so it's time to make a meatloaf, and I'm so excited. This meatloaf, actually, the original recipe for this meatloaf came from my ex-mother-in-law, um, and I have tweaked it, done some things to it to make it sort of more um, my taste, and yeah, let's get started. It's really good. So, you know, it's a good time to talk about learning from learning from bad situations. I learned how to cook an awesome meat. So I can't be mad at that. Next up, we're gonna crack an egg. Get that in there. It's gonna help hold the meat together. We're gonna pour in about some Worcestershire sauce. I'd say about a tablespoon and a half. A little squirt of regular mustard. Just a little bit. A decent amount of ketchup. I'm gonna say about a quarter cup, maybe a third of a cup. A little bit of jarred marinara sauce, black pepper, maybe about a half teaspoon to a teaspoon, some salt. And I like to put this fresh Italian herb grinder to use. And just put me some herby herbs in there. Onion soup mix. Now this is everything but our breadcrumbs and we wanna mix this together first. Cause what we're looking for is, I bet you can guess what I'm gonna say. Consistency. All right, we gonna get our little fingies up in here. Let's squish it. This is gonna feel really wet and that's good because we haven't added our breadcrumbs yet. Now this last ingredient is gonna be our breadcrumbs. It's feeling not quite wet enough so I'm gonna add a little more marinara. Um, the last thing we're gonna add is our breadcrumbs. I use these Italian breadcrumbs, but you can literally use anything. You can make your own breadcrumbs with my focaccia recipe, um, like we did in the last episode, the Mother's Day episode. You can make breadcrumbs out of croutons. You can make breadcrumbs, I've done it with Ritz crackers. You can pretty much use panko, whatever floats your boat, but I prefer these just a little bit, so. And I pretty much always have them on hand. But if you don't, you can just dry out some bread, honestly. You can use cornbread. You can do a lot of different things. It will change the flavor a little bit, obviously, whatever bread you use. But anyway, it's gonna be good. And like what you're looking for here is consistency. You don't want it to be wet anywhere, but you also don't want it to be super dry. Um, you want it thick and chunky and so that when you pick it up, it kind of stays together. Um, we've pretty much got it. Nailed it. 
on the first try. I mean, I do make a lot of meatloafs, so. So this is the fun part. My sister recently told me that she's been making her meatloafs in this kind of a dish, in a bunt pan instead of a traditional dish. And I thought, you know, I love that. And then I tried it out and I really do love it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a meatloaf cake. I know meatloaf just doesn't, it doesn't sound great. I remember when I was a kid, the first time I had to eat meatloaf, I was so upset about it. I was like, I'm gonna eat something called meatloaf. And now I make it all the time, so it's kind of funny. For any of my people who watch from overseas, this probably does look like a, looks like a everybody's so creative meal. We didn't put cheese in the middle of it though. And you know, it don't slide down easy if it ain't cheesy. I love watching other food bloggers and cooks and stuff. It's real fun to see the kind of productions that people are putting out about food. I like, love food, it's my favorite subject. <laughs> Ooh, you can see we're boiling back here. All right. But you know what time it is? It's time to top this meatloaf with a yummy topping. So get all of our ingredients out of here so I can show you what to do. Very simple. We are gonna take a spoon, come around the edge, try to flatten it out. I really want it pretty even across this pan. So that's what we're gonna do. Ever had a subject you just excel so hard at in life? That's me and food. I love it. And one of the things I love is that the person that I'm married to now, haha, <laughs> hi baby, is also such a foodie and they love to cook. They're also a bar bartender. They were doing some pretty exciting stuff at their job, creating a summer menu. So we're just squirting on some mustard. Don't worry, we're gonna mix it together. Then we're gonna squirt around some ketchup. Now we're just gonna take our spoon. We're just gonna kind of mix this, mix it all around. See how it looks ugly and yellow and red? You want that. <laughs> you actually do. It's fine. It's gonna look better once we add our secret ingredient to the top. Ooh, smells good. And we got a handful of brown sugar. And we're just gonna take, kinda put it around here like that. Kinda pat it down in, around. That's gonna be so good. We're gonna slide that in the oven at 350 degrees or 375 for about mm, 45 minutes to an hour. I'm gonna check on it. You know I'm all about that meat temperature, y'all. You want that internal temp of your meat to be 160 degrees and that's gonna make it perfect. So we've got some ingredients that we need to get into this potatoes now that they have boiled. We're going to want to do some salt and pepper, easy. Then our next step is going to be a full thing, 16 ounces, one pound of sour cream. We're going to do about two and a half tablespoons of butter for flavor. We're going to put the butter in first, let it melt into the hot potatoes. We're also going to add... <clears throat> Now, a spicy ranch dip seasoning packet will do just fine, but I really love the Fiesta one if you can find it. It's really, really good. Um, and then we're going to add a few bacon bits, one small spoon of mayonnaise just to make it nice and creamy, um, and we're going to add some 
yes, bacon bits and some triple cheddar cheese. So this is gonna be cheesy, gooey, yummy. It's gonna go so good with our meatloaf, which is smelling amazing, y'all. I'm ready to eat this food, not gonna lie. The cooking part's fun, but I get to do my favorite part next. Y'all know what that is. So I'm sure you do notice that we're basically mashing this like mashed potatoes. We're not gonna get as crazy as to like whip it or anything, but this is gonna be somewhere between the consistency, like a chunky mashed potato style. I think it makes it really good, especially when you do serve it warm. Um, but if you serve it cold, it really does come out more like a potato salad. I like it somewhere in between with this one. I mean, I definitely have some potato salads that have a different kind of consistency, not as whipped, but I just like this texture on this one. It reminds me kind of like a, a hot potato salad, a German potato salad or something like that. I love the smell of this Fiesta one. It's different. It's got more like a Southwest Ranch kind of flavor versus the regular spicy ranch. Oh, that's looking good already. And smelling good too. We're gonna throw. We don't want it to taste like mayonnaise. It's that's not what this potato salad is. But the one scoop of mayonnaise is really gonna give it that whipped, creamy texture that you want. I don't wanna taste it, I wanna feel the texture it's gonna give me. It's like whipping an egg in, you know? Here we go. Oh, this is gonna be so good, y'all. I'm getting excited. I haven't made this one in a while. Okay. Some bacon bits. Use about half a pack in there of uh, 2.5 ounces. So I use about a, I'd say about an 1.2 ounces. Oh, yeah. This is getting right where I want it. Some cheese. Let's do the best part of being a cook, y'all. The taste test. Mmm. It's so simple. But it's honestly, it's so delicious. You could add to this if you wanted to. You could do some diced pickle in there. Or relish, you could do sweet or dill I feel. You could do a lot of things to this. You could do a lot of different things, but I like it. It's perfect. It just needs some green onions. So we're definitely going to serve it with some green onions. Mm. Chef's kiss y'all. And mm, just in time. Look what's ready. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. Y'all. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? Yes, I am singing to my meatloaf. She is lovely. Yum. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's good. If you make a good enough meatloaf, you don't really need to like drown it in ketchup or anything like that. The flavor should all be in the meat and then like the little crust sauce on top. Mm. I could have made some greens with this, but I was being lazy to be honest. I thought about making y'all some um, 
like southern style spinach or turnip greens or something like that. Sorry, that's gonna have to be another episode. Mm. Both of these dishes are great to take to like a potluck or something. I love cooking for a potluck. That's like my favorite thing. We have potlucks over here so often. Mm. And everybody in my crew of fat people can cook, so. <laughs> this is great. You can taste the, so I have made a lot of variations on this exact meatloaf depending on what I have in the cabinet. I've made it with barbecue sauce when I ran out of ketchup. I've made it without the marinara sauce. I've made it with tomato soup in it before. I've made it with different kinds of crackers and bread and everything. The key to this meatloaf being so good is to add the garlic and add the onion soup mix. If you don't have the onion soup mix, it's not gonna taste the same. Mmm, so good. I made a bigger meatloaf than I normally do. I probably could have put two eggs in this and it wouldn't be falling apart so much. The egg is what holds it together. <clears throat> but you know, live and learn. It's still delicious, so I'm not complaining. Mmm. Plus, you know we like when we get messy in the planner with Pallet Kitchen. We get messy while we cook, messy while we eat. You know, full sensory experience. Mm. Y'all know I'm always looking for the perfect bite, like the perfect combo bite. I just got a little bit of that potato with the bacon in it. This oniony, garlicky. Thanks for the meatloaf, Zaza. <laughs> Sorry, I was planning that. No, oh, I love it. <laughs> I love when Mars just like appears out of a corner somewhere, just like pokes the head in. It's like, it's like Mario coming in through a pipe, like. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, my eyes may have been bigger than my stomach here. This is so filling. Mm. It's so good though. I'm excited about having leftovers of this, to be honest. I live for food that makes good leftovers. Mm. Also, if you're not gonna eat this whole three pounds of meatloaf and this whole like I said, I also made an extra large batch of potatoes this time because I didn't want my potatoes to go bad. But this meal, you can definitely put it in a Tupperware because these potatoes are good, hot or cold. You can heat them up with the meatloaf. Not a big deal at all. Mm. I love this. I do make another potato salad that you can eat hot or cold. It's kind of more like similar to a German potato salad. It's not quite a German potato salad, but it's got like stone ground mustard. It's got some, you know, oil and vinegar. More of that kind of some fresh dill. 
Mm, these green onions. If y'all have not been growing your own green onions at home, please do it. It's so simple. When you buy green onions from the store, you know, you cut all this green off and down at the bottom you have the white with the little roots that are already growing from it. It is so simple. You bundle up those roots, put them in a little cup in your windowsill, fill it with water. You don't want the water overflowing, but you want the roots for sure in the water. Keep an eye on it. Change out your water every day. And before you know it, those green onions are gonna regrow, baby. I haven't had to buy green onions in months now. Mmm. Mmm. And they taste so good when they're fresh from your garden, you know? You're like, you labored for that. Mmm. That's what food is, you know, for me. The whole cycle from growing the food, putting together the perfect ingredients to create something, a work of art, eating the food, composting the food to give back to the garden. It's all a labor of love. And it's a beautiful cycle where you can really connect with your food on a, in a deeper way, I feel like. I eat a lot more fresh ingredients since I started growing my own garden. You know, when it gets that time of year and it will soon, we're pepper season and I have a billion peppers growing. I'll be making stuffed peppers and salads with peppers and pepper dressing, pepper infused oils. You can do so much. Pickled peppers. Mmm. I do make some good homemade pickles and pickled goods. That is an area that I like to experiment in quite a lot. Mm. I'm getting so full, y'all. The sweetness of that brown sugar plus the mustard mm. and the little bit of tomato from the ketchup that's on top of this. It's so good. It's really good. I'm fine when people want to add things to their plate for flavor. You know, salt, pepper, you know, Tabasco sauce. All that stuff but I am a firm believer that if you make it right it doesn't need all those bells and whistles mm. y'all I'm stuffed I cannot look at the rest of this potato <laughs> that was so good mmm y'all this meal was so satisfying I am like ooh. It's a little bit elated, but it deserves a good happy dance. Mmm. <laughs> Y'all know that was a good meal. I'm stuffed. I cannot finish this potato, but. Good Lord, that was good. Y'all, I said I couldn't eat another bite. Oh, look at the potato. I'm so dramatic. I can't even look at this potato, says, as they take another bite. Mmm. That was really good. 
I hope y'all make this. Let me know if you like it. If you want more recipes like this. I love hearing y'all's ideas. So help me out. Let me know what you want to see. Mm. I know coming up I'm going to do some kind of a sushi bake. I'm going to do some burgers. I have lots of ideas. But if y'all want to send some more to my inbox, you can never have too many ideas when it comes to food. So email me at planet w a palette at gmail.com let me know what kind of recipes you're enjoying what you'd like to see more of and also i just want to shout out my winner melissa mclean of the 5k grand prize winner i will be sending actually i already sent your t-shirt so i was very excited to see another plus size person won so your 4X t-shirt is on its way. And the rest of y'all who entered, everybody who entered is getting something. So I had these really cool recipe cards printed out just special for y'all who participated. And I am going to write a recipe that I haven't done yet on the show, something completely original that you haven't seen. I'm gonna send y'all uh, my own personal recipe for chicken noodle soup. It's really good. So I hope y'all enjoy. I'll be getting those out this week. Again, thanks everybody, and I'm going to be real lazy and tell you that my planetary of the week is all y'all, because you're the best, you're awesome, I love you so much, and stay tuned next week, and I will announce a real planetary of the week, maybe two, just to make up. All right, love you guys, enjoy your meatloaf.